If you've been thinking about picking up an Asus motherboard, you'll likely want to know how good their RGB software is before you buy. Meet Asus Aura Sync and the much more advanced Asus Aura Creator effect editing application. And as part of my RGB Explain mini series, we are officially completing the last review for motherboard manufacturers RGB solutions today. So if you want to compare the Asus implementation we have here to Gigabyte RGB Fusion, Azure Polychrome, MSI Mystic Lite, all of those will be linked in the video description for you. And the most comprehensive comparison video is absolutely coming soon. To finally answer the question, which motherboard manufacturer's RGB solution is the best? But first, we need to do our deep dive analysis of Asus Aura Sync and Aura Creator, the features, lighting effects, bugs, and overall usability, to answer every question that you might have. So before we start to cover free, open source, and third-party RGB solutions, let's find out if Asus Aura Sync and Aura Creator are any good. So in these videos, we try to answer some really important questions that you just can't find the answers to anywhere else. Like, what do the effects actually look like? Is there a max number of LEDs that you can set? Is there BIOS control, advanced effect editing? And about 15 other questions with new ones added based on your feedback. These questions are really quite important to me and apparently important to you guys too. Not just for your own builds, but for your friends and recommendations and anyone who values a cohesive RGB solution. So I split these videos up into a few different sections for you. The test system and how the lighting is configured from a hardware perspective, as this will determine how the lighting will flow throughout the system. Then we move on to software features, including the top questions you didn't even know that you needed the answer to. Then we cover any bugs and the usability of the solution. Oh no, don't do that. What? Oh, balls. Before we, of course, cover the effects, what they look like both inside and outside of a system using multiple different types of devices. So let me show you our test system and why these random RGB strips are just chilling there. So what I'm going to do is detail and link all of the hardware in the video description for you, as most of it is pretty much irrelevant for this video. Other than the Asus Strix B550 eGaming motherboard, the Asus RTX 3060 Ti, this is the KO model, the G-Skill Enki pump block, that's also quite important, the G-Skill Trinet Z memory right there, and the Arctic Bionics P120 ARGB fans going all the way down the front. But we also need to talk about the RGB devices and how they're wired up. We have one addressable RGB header being split two ways. The first of the two ways is to the Arctic Bionics P120 fans. It starts at this rear exhaust, going all the way down to the front bottom, just there. And the other side of the splitter is actually being sent to this RGB strip. The reason being is so that you can see how the effect will display on both daisy chain fans and also the RGB strip simultaneously. The other addressable header on the motherboard is also connected to a splitter being split two ways. The first way is going to the G-Skill Enki pump block right there. And the second side of that splitter is being sent to the accent lighting running along the top and also down the rear side of the case. For non-addressable headers, we also have another splitter two ways. First way is being sent here so that you can see a good representation of what the non-addressable RGB light is doing and the other side is right next to the radiator on the inside of the case which is somewhere that I would actually put it in a build. As always I'm going to try and keep this set up as close as possible for all future videos moving forward in this series and update you of any changes. But now it's time to take a look and see if Asus Aura Sync and Aura Creator are any good. So to get Asus Aura Sync or Aura Creator up and running to control your RGB, you first need to install the Asus Armory Creator application. Within that, you can then access Aura Sync right here, which is similar to other motherboard manufacturers' RGB software, and the basic way that you can control your RGB lighting for Asus motherboards and compatible connected RGB devices. But unlike other motherboard manufacturers' RGB solutions, there's also another, significantly more advanced way to control your RGB for Asus motherboards. Asus Aura Creator right here. This is the next level for RGB customization using a timeline-based advanced effect editor that I'm really excited to also include within this review. The specific version of Armory Crate is 5.1.5.0, Aura Creator is 3.3.4.0, with all other packages and SDK versions listed right here. So I'm going to go over the most important features and questions that you should have with any RGB software and answer them from the perspective of both the basic Aura Sync application as well as the advanced Aura Creator application. Before we then take a look at the usability, the effects and any bugs that I find. 
So what I want to do is start by giving you a small run through of the applications, both Aura Sync, how that works, as well as Aura Creator, just so that you better understand the questions and how they apply to both these pieces of software. So Aura Sync can be accessed using the dashboard and the buttons right here within Armory Crate. But if we collapse that burger menu, you can see all of the devices that we can control through Aura Sync. And within Aura Effects, you can control them as global effects, as in if I change this to static blue, everything within the system is gonna light up static blue, including memory, GPU, everything that's connected to the system. You can then click on any one of these effects to edit the parameters on the right hand side and you can desync anything from the global effects hypothetically. If we deselect memory right there you can see if we go back onto a static blue the memory is unaffected and it's producing the default G skill effect. But then when we go onto Aura Creator right here you can see that this is significantly more advanced. What we have here is a visual representation of all the devices that are connected within the system. We're not seeing the memory right here because likely we have it desynced. So if we re-enable that and then go back onto Aura Creator, head over to PC Components, and then you can see that our memory is back inside Aura Creator. So Aura Creator, we're gonna to touch on this a lot more in a bit, but it's significantly more advanced based on a timeline effect editor. Essentially, any one of these components that you want to control, you would either select it or select multiple right there and then add as layer. And then you can apply any effect on this left-hand side to build a timeline of effects for those devices. And you'll see how that will produce. So we have a static red for the ones that we're controlling, as you can see on screen and on the computer in front of us. This is now going to change to breathing and then change to color cycle. And the great thing about this application is that you can just set layers upon layers upon layers for different types of customization, different effects that fade in and out against each other, which is fantastic. So we're going to come back to this, but first we need to answer the most important questions you should have when it comes to any RGB solution. So question number one is how many effects do you actually get? So within Aura Sync, we are in global lighting effects, controlling everything from motherboard, GPU, memory, addressable RGB strips, but we haven't connected our Hue device yet. Within the global lighting effects, you actually get 14 different effects plus off. Now I say 14 because although there's nine categories here, within Smart, you get three different types of smart lighting. And within Music, again, you get four different types of music effects. So what we'll do is turn that back onto Rainbow, go over to Sync Devices, and talk to you about the GPU effects. Within here, you get nine different effects, which I'll show you one of them right here, as well as Aura Sync to resync it back to the global lighting effects that I was showing you earlier. So if we go on to the GPU that's now desynced and we can select any one of these effects and it won't manipulate any other lighting within the system, only the GPU. At this point, I would tell you how many effects are also in the memory, but the unfortunate thing is you don't seem to get independent memory control. To access independent GPU control, you'd hit this play button right here or go over to the device. But this unfortunately is not possible with the memory. However, if you did want independent memory control, what I would suggest is to head over to Aura Effects and then Aura Creator. What you would then be able to do is independently control these memory modules within this application, which is significantly more advanced than Aura Sync. And there we have it, your memory modules are green. But while we're inside Aura Creator, you get 11 different effects on the left-hand side that you can also layer up and create extremely unique effects. Which nicely brings us on to question number two. Can you stack the effects? And that's essentially what Aura Creator does. These tracks at the bottom that we've been adding are essentially layers, and the layers above will override the layers on top. If we extend that out to the same amount of time, have it set to the color red, with the background color being green. So what's going to happen is as the red fades out of the animation, the green is going to come in from the track underneath it, producing a stackable effect, and can easily produce effects that are not possible through Aura Sync, only possible through Aura Creator right there. So the next question on the list is can you create custom user effects? And the answer for Asus Aura Creator is absolutely yes. Everything about this software is giving you the customization to make effects that are truly unique to you and your system. In terms of motherboard manufacturer's RGB implementation, the Aura Creator software is by far the most sophisticated. In terms of Aura Sync, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's advanced user effects, but you do get the ability to say choose random on a certain effect or choose multiple different colors. Starry Night, for example, allows you to add a background color. Let's give it a soft white right there. And then a foreground color too, which produces this effect that you're seeing right here, which can also be changed to random. Meaning that there's pretty good control within Aura Sync, but realistically, it's kind of nothing compared to Aura Creator. Next up is, what are you doing to protect yourself on the internet? 
The unfortunate truth is that companies relentlessly track you around the internet to monitor what you do and how best to exploit the information they gather from you. So why not stop them in their tracks now with today's video sponsor NordVPN. As an almost three year happy customer of theirs, when they reached out to sponsor this video, I felt extremely fortunate to be able to tell you guys why protecting your privacy is so important, especially in public Wi-Fi networks where unencrypted information can easily be read using a packet sniffer to steal your important banking and personal information. But the benefits of NordVPN don't stop app protection, accessing region lock content, peer-to-peer -peer safety for you pirates and privateers, I see you. And if that wasn't enough, NordVPN offers comprehensive security against cyber threats by blocking trackers, malicious ads, harmful websites, and infected files. So with intuitive and easy to use applications for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Android, get protected today using your exclusive NordVPN deal in the video description. With a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee, the only thing stopping you from being protected is you. So thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the content. Next up is can you edit the speed? Within Aura Sync, you get five different levels of speed control. If you have speed control, not all of them will. When it comes to brightness control, anytime that you have a color picker, say like right here, you can edit the brightness by essentially changing the RGB color code values. So if we want this to be the same pink, but softer, all that we would need to do is change both of these values lower. And that's the same pink, just a lower opacity, as you can see by this circle right here. And what that means is that you essentially get 255 different levels of opacity. And if we go back over to AuraSync, the same can be done right here. Anytime that you see this box, that's your color picker, and that's how you're going to be controlling the opacity. And because we're working with this color picker, theoretically it's 16.7 million colors that you can choose from with independent RGB color control right there. And this is the same for the Aura Creator application. Another thing that I really like about this implementation is that you can set favorite colors by simply clicking here. And that will set that down here as a custom color for you to use commonly throughout your system. And to delete it, all that you need to do is that and done. Next up is, can you assign how many LEDs are actually in a connected device so that an effect can be configured appropriately for your system? And the answer to that is yes. I'll explain in a bit why I went into zero opacity instead of going to dark mode because there is a definite bug in there. But all that we need to do is go over to the motherboard, wait about seven years, and you're presented with the first category, which is shutdown effect animations right there. But if we head over to addressable headers, you'll see that there are two sections here, gen one and gen two. And then underneath that, the number Number of LEDs that are connected to that header. In terms of Gen 1 addressable devices, you can have up to 120 per addressable RGB header on the motherboard. And if we select Gen 2, right now what it's doing is trying to figure out if the connected devices are addressable Gen 1 or Gen 2. Gen 2 devices, as far as I can tell, are a way for a connected device to be able to communicate with the software so that the software is aware of the device's parameters. For example, the RGB strips and everything that we have connected in this system, they don't have any way to communicate with the software. They just take the output of the software and display it sequentially along the strip as and when it's being provided. So unless you know your device is specifically Gen 2, the expectation is that you'll have 120 LEDs per addressable RGB header on the motherboard. And for Gen 2 devices, you can apparently have up to 500 LEDs. But what about RGB calibration? Now, this isn't gonna be useful to everyone, but the people that it is going to be useful to are very much going to appreciate it. Essentially, if you head over to RGB headers instead of addressable headers, you can then hit calibration right there. This drop-down list will allow you to select which RGB header, and then we'll head over to next. So what the software is doing now is lighting up the non-addressable RGB strip here, and it thinks that it's lighting it up red. But not all RGB strips are built the same, and the software may think it's producing red, but it's actually producing green. So this allows you to configure the software based on the RGB strip or connected device that you have. In terms of profiles, within the AuraSync application, you unfortunately don't get access to any profiles here, which means that you also can't import or export profiles, which would be a big shame if you didn't have access to the Aura Creator software, which if we go over here, you can see that I have a couple different profiles here, one that I have actually imported from the internet, and you can go over here, create new, import, export, or delete one that you actually have set up already. But that doesn't mean that this is a great implementation, and I'm gonna have to discuss it more in the usability and bug section of this video. But what about special integrations? Now, what we mean by that is integrating third parties, devices and ecosystems within AuraSync. And as you can see here, we do have a Philips Hue device set up. 
but it is worth bearing in mind that you can only use it under the four lighting conditions, static, breathing, color cycle, and dark. So if we enable that, and what I'm showing you on screen is the effect footage that I've captured previously, and this should be a color cycle. But unfortunately, we don't get access to that in Aura Creator, if that's something that you did want to do. In terms of memory control, the compatible memory list includes G-Skill, Corsair, Ballistics, Patriot, T-Force, XPG, and Oloy. The only one that it doesn't include that we do look for is HyperX, Kingston. And when it comes to controlling the memory modules, this is not possible through Aura Sync, but it is possible through Aura Creator. With independent memory control, simply by selecting it, set as new layer, and just make sure that you name the layers appropriately, otherwise you're going to get really confused really quickly. But an area that I think Asus should really pay a bit more attention to is the bundled software that they're including with this application. It is an extreme amount. If we head over to programs, what we're going to do is have a look through the list of applications that have been installed by installing Armory Crate and also Aura and Aura Creator. 15, 16. So I count 16 different pieces of software, both from Asus and third parties that have been installed on this system, which leads us on to our next question and a new question. What is the CPU usage of this system given the lighting? This is a fresh install of Windows 10, but the idle CPU usage with nothing else running other than Armory Crate and Aura Creator is coming up for an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 six core at about 10% CPU usage, which is an astronomical amount of CPU usage for RGB. We can actually reduce that if we go over here and go onto Aura Performance Mode. At the moment, it's currently set to on and everything that you've viewed is with the performance mode on. It gives a much better effect and a lot less harsh stepping. If I turn it off, you'll see what I mean. Now all of the LEDs as they're producing their effect, they're stuttering each of the way through. And that's not just for the rainbow effect. If we go over to breathing, it's arguably worse. And the thing that helps it is the performance mode. If we turn that back on, you'll see that that's a lot smoother animation. The problem is with performance mode off, we essentially drop by 50% CPU usage, going from about 5.6 to about 10 to 12. It is worth mentioning that I didn't record this information for other RGB manufacturers software. So when I do the next video, which will be the roundup and which one is absolutely the best between Asus, MSI, Gigabyte and ASRock, I'll definitely run these tests with a standardized CPU to find out which one is consuming the most resources. So what we're going to do is turn this back on and answer our next question. What lights remain on when the computer goes to sleep? So let's check that out now. So I'm happy to tell you that the IO shield is lit and also the PCH down there, but you may not be able to see it because the GPU. But what about GPU support? Well, of course we get support for all Asus graphics cards with compatible lighting, but also potentially Founders Editions cards. So let's take a look, swap out this GPU and add in a 3080 Founders Edition, see if we can control that. What it should do is appear in this list right here, which is interesting that it doesn't. but still we are not getting the Founders Editions card. That's not to say that yours won't. There's quite a few discussion threads online with people having the 3080 Founders Editions working, but unfortunately it wasn't recognized for me. So in terms of BIOS control, we don't get a fully featured sort of effect editor within the BIOS, but we do get four options that we can choose from right here. And then the last question that we have is if you set up an effect within Aura Sync right here, will it keep this effect if we uninstall Armory Crate, uninstall Aura, uninstall everything? Can you set up the effect that you want and then just delete all of the software. And there we have it. It defaulted back to a static red and it didn't retain the effect after we uninstalled. So before we cover the effects, welcome to the usability and bug section of this video. At this point, you should know if Asus Aura has the features you value, but that's only really half the story, especially if it doesn't implement the UI effectively or if you can't use a feature because of a bug. Why did you just turn off? Okay, I'm just gonna pee and let you do whatever the fuck you're doing. So before I tell you about the effects, let me show you what I like and what I think really needs to be improved as well as the bugs that I found. Also bear in mind that this is a best case scenario. A fresh install of Windows 10, so especially when it comes to bugs, if we uncover anything here, it's a pretty significant failure. So starting out with the UI, I actually really like the design of the user interface. I think it's incredibly clean. I also really like that you can customize the user interface by selecting one of these themes. So what we're going to do is select that one and you'll see how the theme 
some changes. And when it comes to actually choosing the effects and customizing them, again, it's really nicely laid out. We've got really good use of dual code right here, giving a semantic and syntactic representation of what's going to be happening within your system. When it comes to color choice and customization, I really like what they've done here. They've quite clearly broken things out into important sections that are quite obvious what they're controlling. And when it comes to the color picker itself, again, I love the customization on this, as well as being able to set independent RGB color codes and set custom colors right here. I also like that you can set the number of LEDs in software. And then when it comes to Asus Aura Creator, there's no other way to put this other than other motherboard manufacturers are not doing enough compared to this. Not only can you implement multiple different tracks right here, which all intertwine with one another and react accordingly, but they also allow significant control, much further than any basic application can. But the things that I think they need to improve upon is speed control. A lot of times I found myself wanting to go a lot slower than the lowest level of speed. So I think 10 stops of speed would be an appropriate level. One thing I really would like to see is something like strobing, being able to color cycle instead of just random. If we go into music, for example, and on the beatbox style, we have access to both random and color cycle. It'd be really nice to include that in strobing and other areas that it's missing. In terms of importing and exporting profiles, we need to go back onto Aura Creator. You can do that right here by importing and exporting. This is one that I pulled off Reddit. And if we play this, you'll see that unfortunately nothing happens. If we take a look in the configuration file, we can see that it's a laptop that it was being configured for um, with a lot of different parameters that we naturally will not have given our setup is, is very different from the person who configured this. And although that's actually quite a complex issue to deal with in software, it would be nice if there was some sort of translation between, okay, you don't have this device, but you do have these devices. How can we use that and display the RGB appropriately for what you have? Because at the moment, if you import a profile, the likelihood of it actually working on your system seems incredibly slim. And that is such a missed opportunity for the community to get involved in this and make some awesome RGB effects. As I mentioned before, CPU usage for the lighting service is extremely high, and that's not taking into account other services that are related to the lighting, meaning that when you're in performance mode on a six core CPU, this is a 3600 non-X, it's still taking up 11% CPU usage on performance mode. Another thing that I really, really would like to see Asus do is when we have a rainbow effect, and if we want to customize it like this, whoever created this profile, that's actually really quite a beautiful color, and I'd really like to be able to use that in say here be able to assign that rainbow effect to this list and use it elsewhere within the system and going back to aura sync into the addressable headers 120 leds per addressable rgb header i think is just simply not enough that is almost half compared to what most of them offer which means that if you're trying to look for aura sync or aura creator to control led strips that provide lighting within a room you're going to be very very limited in terms of bugs the first thing that i want to highlight is asus aura caused a crash six times whilst testing this software suite for context the most amount of crashes so far for MSI Mystic Lite, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, and ASRock Polychrome was two. Additionally, it was reasonably common for LEDs to just spaz out midway through an effect, as you can see here. And one thing that's really annoying is now that I've connected a Hue device and it's actually not synced right now. So anything that we control in here should not affect the lighting and the lighting that we can use is static, breathing, color cycle, or dark, but none of these should change the Hue device. However, if we go over to effects, if we go breathing, no change. Static, no change. Again, because we are not linked right here. But if we go over to effects and go dark, what is that about? How do I get that back? I can't go to static. It's just, it's stupid. Why did you do that? So what I'm going to do is give you an overview and my opinion of the effects for both Asus Aura Sync and Aura Creator here in this video. But if you did want to see all of the effects in much, much more detail, I'll have that video uploaded on the Tet Lens Behind the Lens channel, which will be linked in the video description for you. As I mentioned previously, I'm kind of pushing the limits of time here on the platform and doing it this way halves the length for each video. But the effect video is still very important and one that I know many of you guys value. So it's gonna be in the video description for those of you who want to view it. But ultimately, what do I think of Asus Aura. If you want to go basic with your RGB, the less advanced Aura Sync application allows you to easily set it and forget it between 14 different global effects. And even though Aura Sync is more basic than Aura Creator, the effects will still typically have better customization compared to the competition. And I consider them to be well thought out and mostly well implemented. Take audio based effects, for example, which seem to be much better synced to the music compared to other RGB implementations. 
However, I wasn't as impressed with the lag in the adaptive effect that attempts to mimic the colors on screen, but there is potential there. I also appreciate the Starry Night effect and the Rainbow effect, which I think are both well-designed. However, if you don't set the software to performance mode, it reduces the update frequency to the point of disaster, with harsh and distracting stepping throughout. The fix for this, unfortunately, is toggling on performance mode and doubling your CPU usage. Another thing to note is that we are missing independent memory control within Aura Sync specifically, and some highly sequential effects are also missing. These are typical staples within RGB software and work well with being able to set the amount of LEDs within a connected device, something Aura Sync can do. Up to 120 LEDs per addressable header for standard ARGB strips and devices. So although Aura Sync has significantly less effects than say MSI Mystic Lite, the Aura Creator application is where Asus completely blows it and other motherboard manufacturers RGB solutions just out of the water. With significantly better customization for nearly all effects, plus the ability to build multiple unique effect layers with granular control over devices and layout. This means that you can design your RGB solution to a level of sophistication that far exceeds any motherboard manufacturer's RGB implementation, with effects spanning as many or as few devices as you want and interweaving between them. This is the definition of custom user effects and allows almost infinite customizability within the parameters defined by the application. Parameters such as five levels of speed, which I often felt was too few. I would argue is probably still a little too fast. So let's get that up to 10 and widen the difference between min and max speed. But other parameters such as direction that define the flow of the effect are a huge welcome. And the live display within Aura Creator allows you to fully understand how your system is reacting. So well done Asus, you weren't the first to do it, but hopefully you'll be able to show other motherboard manufacturers that there's a better way. A better way to implement a truly customizable RGB solution. So, Asus Aura Sync and Aura Creator are two different applications that fundamentally achieve the same task. However, they are geared towards completely different people. If you don't care too much about RGB and you just want something basic, get Aura Sync, set it and forget it. But if you want to set up something that matches your theme perfectly in a way that is truly unique to you, have a play around with Aura Creator. It is undoubtedly more sophisticated than the competition from motherboard manufacturers, and you can honestly get something really special set up in a very short amount of time. So from that perspective, I am very impressed. And it goes to show that Asus CRGB implementation as an investment, not just a cost. But that doesn't mean that I'm 100% happy with it either. I experience more crashes and bugs than any other RGB software so far. Are you fucking serious? Oh no, don't do that. Oh, balls. What? Why did you just turn off? You know you were costing me storage space. Whatever the fuck you're doing. And I hate several things about this implementation more than I hated anything about the others. The fact that you have to install Armory Crate to begin with. The fact it installs so much completely redundant software for devices you don't even own. And lastly, that it consumes such a high amount of CPU resources, especially in performance mode, which I think is necessary for a decent experience. Although to be fair to them, we will have to check that in our roundup coming soon. So Asus, I love where this is going. Just please fix the bugs and work on making it much more lightweight and more efficient. So if you want to check out Asus Aura Sync or Aura Creator to other motherboard manufacturers RGB, make sure they check out the full playlist in the video description. The next one in the series will be the roundup to find out which motherboard manufacturers RGB solution is the best before we then move on to free and third party solutions. So if you're new here, get subscribed, turn on notifications, or at least check out another video before you do. I have some recents in the video description and the comment section for you to check out. And remember guys, like is always appreciated and I hope you have an amazing day.